Morning, everyone. We're going to wait a few minutes here while everybody uh, joins. We'll get started about two minutes after the hour uh, or afternoon, depending on where you guys are at. Uh, so give us a couple minutes and we'll get started. All right, Richard. Okay, thanks, Tony. Thank I think you. we're good to go. Um, welcome everybody to our works for the next webinar with um, Veracity. And we're gonna talk about the Fusepan video wall controller today. And I'm here with uh, Richard Lentz uh, from uh, Veracity. Uh, and he's gonna be uh, introducing the Fusepan uh, hardware and software. And he's gonna walk us through how it uh, works with an X and how you guys can create uh, video walls. Um, uh, seamlessly uh, that work with uh, NX Witness and other Powered by NX products. So Richard, you want to take the wheel? Yes, uh, thanks um, Tony. Yeah. One, uh, one, one, sorry, one quick thing to add. Um, there's a Q&A um, and chat in the Zoom interface. So if you guys have any questions along the way, uh, throw your questions up there and I'll interrupt Richard uh, from time to time to ask him those questions as they come in. So, over to you, Richard. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Tony. Uh, introduce myself as uh, Richard Lynch, product manager of the Viewspan range of new video wall decoders. These are tightly integrated within the NX platform. I'd like to talk through the basics of the video hardware and software before sharing a selection of footage depicting the various NX use cases for visual wall control use. Um, uh, then we can finally hope to reflect on some real life video wall experiences any product questions that you may have. Again, I hope you can all see my screen okay. Um, I'm sure most of you are aware of the products available from Veracity today, compatible with the NX environment. From cold store storage server solutions, transmission and extenders. However, today, as we've already suggested, we would like to share with the NX community uh, a new lead in visual solution range uh, we've labelled as ViewSpan which is deeply embedded within the NX management software. Okay, uh, we're discussing the new ViewSpan 6 and ViewSpan 6 Pro video wall appliances, capable of high density decoding across a six output desktop canvas. Fully rack mountable, two year in height, half length and depth, the new ViewSpan 6 appliances are a custom design using embedded components so there's no PCI Express cards in these appliances at all. The solution is tailored to the surveillance industry 
uh, on, uh, specifically designed for, for the use cases found in the surveillance space and are thermally optimized. Uh, the I.O. found on, on, on these units contains six display port outputs, as you can see in the image, uh, dual one gigabit Ethernet connectivity, uh, four USB ports, two at the front, two at the rear of the appliance. So we've chosen uh, to use a pre-configured Windows 10 platform on these appliances uh, for usability more than anything else. Both Linux and Windows have their advantages and disadvantages. Perhaps this is a topic for another day. However, Windows does provide us with a familiar interface if users need to interact uh, above and beyond standard functionality. So let's say we wanted to put some VN VNC clients for viewing remote PC desktops onto the video wall uh, and any advanced integration that might be needed as part of the install. Um, this platform is out of the box prepared. Uh, all updates, with the exception of critical Windows updates, are disabled by default. The platform's optimized performance with, with features such as transparency disabled, taskbars and icon, icons hidden, and power options set for 24-7 use case. Uh, we've chosen to use a pre-configured Windows 10 platform um, for those reasons. Um, like I say, it, it is possible to run Linux on these boxes, but it will be a Windows out of the box uh, when delivered and boot up uh, without the need for a keyboard and mouse. We'll talk a little bit more about that um, uh, in, in a little while. So having a quick look at the difference between the two products. So we've got a ViewSpan 6 and a ViewSpan 6 Plus. So they both have six outputs. Um, the ViewSpan 6 Plus has, is 4K output capable, so we can run six 4K screens. Uh, both capable of H.264, um, 265, motion JPEG, all accelerated decode formats. Uh, with other formats uh, able to roll over to CPU decoding on both appliances and both appliances can dewarp video. Now if an install requires a high density of, of decoded video and a higher density of H.265 video, this is where the ViewSpan 6 Plus comes into play. Um, so really what we need to get uh, a handle on when we're, we're discussing which appliance suits which installation, we need to have conversation to discuss the, the requirements of the end user and the end user's expectation. Um, uh, just a quick list there of the sort of sectors that we can use the ViewSpan uh, video wall range in. Obviously transport hubs, emergency services, all sorts of campuses, uh, infrastructure, hospitality, leisure and construction. A uh, very quick read of the hardware uh, features uh, resulting in user advantages. Um, I, I've mentioned previously, it's a tailored integrated embedded solution. It's a custom board, um, a lock display output arrangement. So as you may be aware, when you turn monitors off and you've got a desktop, you don't want your desktop jumping around. So we lock a, a display output um, consistently on all our outputs. These are the little tweaks that you, you need for a video wall appliance. It's low power consumption, uh, less than 100, about 150 watts, typical use case whilst decoding quite a high, high number of, of, of video streams. Uh, we've got a front panel for display the device metrics, um, give you the address of the, of, of the web portal for the device, the rack mounting options, um, like I say, the outputs are native display port and we provide a HDMI dongle currently because not all dongles, not all display port to HDMI dongles are, are equal, as, as many of you may know. Um, resolution, frame rate and encode agnostic, tested to international compliance standards, so your FCC, CE, et cetera. Uh, warranties and extended warranty availability. Um, GPU acceleration is used uh, where possible, which is going to cover 90 plus percentage of, of the video found on the wire. 
and active output uh, read drivers to, to allow us longer cable length between the, the, the video wall appliance and the, and the screens in the control room itself. So that's the hardware advantages. A quick run through some software advantages, uh, a browser web portal so we can set up the appliance remotely while sitting in front of the wall, the Windows 10 platform, unified output display canvas so we can we can we can span monitor boundaries with the video uh, we've got we've got further sdks and interfaces for deeper integrations the accelerated video decoding of the most common codecs there and processor rollover for for other other formats that you may come across uh, rtsp conformance so we can view archived mvr content on the wall and the real-time accelerated fissile lens correction or de-warping. We've also got some accelerated web browser technology going on there. We're using the new Chromium engine. So if you want to stream live news channels on the wall, etc., we can do that. And there's a client software encoding suite uh, for pushing applications and, and displays to the wall. Okay, so we've talked or I've mentioned briefly this appliance web portal. So this really comes from our experience of, of video walls and, and where video walls are usually kept and stored in a server room not always sometimes they're they're in a cupboard in the same room but i'd say at least 50 percent of the time they're, they're they're down the hallway in a separate room and with that being the case nobody wants to put it the, the, the usb keyboard and mouse into the controller to set up the appliance so we've provided this this appliance web portal on all our hardware it's all installed and ready to use where you can remotely set up your network your display arrangement global options performance metrics reboot the machine etc we'll, we'll we'll talk through that a little bit more in a moment some of the videos that we've got so the product demo i think we do start with the the appliance web portal or no, we start with out of the box experience so let me just explain what's happening in this slide so we can see here a, a screen grab of the NX client window. So this is actually a screen grab of the three monitors. You can see so we can see a video wall in the top right corner there, and then there's a, like a control station below it. I'm grabbing the control station um, in the main slide and just showing you what's happening on the on the wall in the top right. So this is a six screen, six output video wall controller. When you switch the controller on for the first time it will load up it may load up won't load up well one in six chance of it loading up perfectly but the screens could be obviously mismatched around you can either change it physically but we advise to change it in software which we'll talk about in a moment and a page will open on the wall on one of the screens displaying these instructions um let's just play the video so let's play some videos as i, as I talk uh, talk alongside them So what I'm doing here is, as the instructions are telling me to do, is add the web portal address as a web page within the NX environment. So now I've always got access to the video wall from within the NX client. Um, and that's what step one is saying. So there's just four simple steps in total. Network settings. So it will boot up in uh, DHCP mode um, and then from from there on you can change it to be a static ip address there's perhaps a hole in there if you haven't got dhcp on the network we can only do as much as possible really with these things we try to reflect the ipv4 settings in windows step three setting up the displays like I say we're in the correct order already on the wall but we'll show you what you would do if they came up out of order Again, the, the interface here in the web portal reflects the interface that you may be familiar with in, in Windows or Linux. You can redetect, identify displays. We can drag, rearrange, and software. Like I said, this is a much preferred method rather than unplugging um, on, your, on your hands and knees in the back of a cupboard display port or HDMI cables. And then we've got this lock displays that we mentioned earlier. So we're forcing, forcing the, uh, the, the image out here. Now, I think it's probably worth, uh, before we move on to the inputs, if I just close this window a second, just briefly mentioning when you force out a mode 
it, it, it's this is not confined to the to the view span set of appliances, but any any piece of display technology, a graphics card, etc. If you're forcing them and you're connected to a monitor, you will get expected behaviour. You turn the monitor off, you turn the monitor back on again, you will get a signal. If you're using television screens, which we have seen is quite a common use case uh, in video wall design, because they're obviously a lot cheaper and they're quite large displays, you may see or notice or witness the difficulties because the link doesn't retrain and there's no hot plug redetected because they're televisions in the way that they work. So all I'm saying here is just be careful. It isn't a limitation of, of the ViewSpan hardware by far. It's just a limitation of the technologies that are on the wire. Again, it's just, it's just the world of AV and I'm sure people have had experiences here already. Um, next, so the next step would be obviously to connect the video wall to the, the NX environment. Or let's have a play a video here. So we're on step four now of the instructions that you've got displayed locally and on the video wall still. We go over to the inputs tab. Uh, there's a button there that was just add, add input server. Give a friendly name. Uh, armed with the IP address of the NX server and the standard NX server or address which is 7001 which obviously can change your username and password now the video cache that's the size of the playback buffer for smooth video sometimes it's it's um, the playback buffer is is, is, is is measured in in a file size uh, we measured it in milliseconds so 500 milliseconds of, of, of playback buffer 500 milliseconds is plenty of time on a local network, that's half a second of latency between the NVR, the, the NX NVR and the video wall. So there's no issues really with the default setting of 500. Now, secondary streams, we'll discuss more on a slide towards the end because it's, it's an interesting topic. Um, auto is by default. Uh, by unticking the TCP streaming, you will opt for UDP streaming and direct disabling direct control. This is all to do with using up video wall licenses, which we'll discuss again in, 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 in short detail in, in a moment. So as you can see there, we just applied it and the video decoder appeared. Um, I'll fast forward the video again. So as soon as I pause at this time, because it's as simple as this. We could play from there. So we add the video server, and you'll see down here the video wall will just appear in the left hand pane decoder there. It gives it a unique address of IP, not it doesn't use the friendly name because you can have multiple of the same string. So, so Richard, when you were doing that, what you were doing is really creating the video wall in the software. Is that right? Yes. So yeah. we're just connecting. This is the stage of connecting um, the, the video wall to the NX server message bus in technical terms. So putting the, the IP address, the username and password in and clicking add server, as long as your credentials are correct, you know, we will just appear, if I get the right page here, in this so left a, Yeah, typically if you're adding a video wall, you have to go through a whole process of like installing the client on the third party thing, putting it into video wall mode and then, um, and then uh, switching it over. But, but, but what uh, Veracity is doing here is actually injecting their device into the system so that it shows up and acts like a video wall, which is really cool because you don't have to go through all this, the, the multiple steps that are involved in actually creating the video wall itself. So yeah, just make sure yeah that's good it. to clarify, Tony. You're right. Because so, so really, I guess one case in point here is there is no requirement to install any software onto the ViewSpan appliances. In a nutshell. Right. Yeah, cool. All right. Um, so, yeah, as adding, to, adding, the, adding the video wall to the NX environment. And then the last but not least slide on the appliance web portal is global settings. Uh, so on the settings tab, we've got options, um, global settings here. We can edit them. There's a debug mode. There's 
there's a front panel that you can disable the, the display panel on the front of the device if you ever wanted to turn that off and um, by default the front panel will display the IP address and MAC address of the device uh, video aspect ratio again they're global settings either you want them or you don't want black borders at the side of your video we use the camera label uh, as the on-screen display on the video you'll see in a moment when we bring some video up um, what else do we have in here there is obviously update firmware updates all can be done from a client machine restarting and shutting down the pc again the ability to do this from a client uh, station is, is is quite useful so there are my global settings so next we move in to what we will call nx video wall functionality so once we've, we've now got our video wall in and, and as soon as as soon as the um the video wall realizes it's on the network optics environment it removes the the, the instructions page and the startup page now, if you look at the startup page within the NX environment, just gives you some system metrics, uptime, etc., with the video wall controller itself. <clears throat> I think we're going to expand. So if we expand the video wall here in the left-hand NX client page, we can see the six uh, six screens and identify the screens in exactly the same way that you would use in you know the the native nx environment we can rename the video wall etc from here i mean we should uh, uh, spend some time talking about what a difference between a screen and a region and a video wall license but perhaps we can save that to the end time when we go through some questions because it's by default we're just allocating a region to be a screen on the video wall so hence it appears within the nx world as as i call them regions because regions don't have to be screens um, so i'm just renaming a couple of the regions there and identifying them as simple simple as you'd expect it to be um, now this slide so we're talking about identifying and friendly names we've done that opening layout files on the video wall again all common nx functionality you create your video walls offline and we can simply drag them onto the onto the video wall regions you see i've re renamed them all in this video and as they drop on they just simply open up on the video wall again as expected i I think if you look closely at the video, you can see the on-screen display on some of them as well. And um, that should be the same as the label of the, of, of the video input. Yeah, so what you're doing here is you're just dragging and dropping layouts to the different regions that you have set up. Yes, that's okay. correct. And I think this in this next part, Tony, I'm saving the current matrix. So then you can, like you, you're all probably aware, you can save a matrix. So I don't have to do that again. Um, but the act of just dragging and dropping a layout file onto a region is 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 really what is is the power of any triggers events you know rules analytics that you want to 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 put in to the nx world of of, of 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 you know automating what you see on the wall if you want to, you know to use a region for automation that makes sense you also um you you can drop individual um uh, cameras and web pages and everything on those layouts as well it doesn't have yeah. to be layouts right yeah yeah, yeah. If I go on to the, so I think the next video is kill that one. So I think there's just a short video here. I think I, if I cleared the wall. Yeah, go through nice and timely and clear each screen individually, and then load the matrix. Full wall. Right click, load matrix. So instead of now having to drag and drop each layer individually, I can load a matrix. If that's the functionality you want, I mean, this is very basic functionality we're at at the moment. We're going to go on some more interactive functionality in, in a moment. So that's loading a matrix. I think that was probably worth showing. Um, now, some of the great functionality that, that, that I, I, this is within, the, within the NX user interface is the Zoom share and multi-stream. Now, 
I don't know how much this is used, Tony, um, but we've replicated all the functionality on the video wall. So I'll play a video, make more sense. So I think here I double click on one of the regions and I'm in what's called the live view. So I can drop a number of videos straight onto the video wall. There's four. And I'm selecting, I'm going to, in the, in the, in the client UI, I can select a zoom window. So we grab this guy here and we can zoom in on him. And again, it's all reflected on the video wall. We can chase the car. And we can even take that zoom window across stream boundaries. Um, so we create another zoom window you can't see because the video is in the way but you can just drag it across client streams and I think that's brilliant um, and that's functionality again of NX reflected in the NX client on the video wall okay. there. Uh, fish eye lens correction um, always an interesting topic we don't come across as many people as we'd like to using fish ID warp on the video wall. I don't think many people expect it to be able to work, um, especially spanning six monitors, but we put a lot of work and effort and time into getting complete transparency with the NX client on the video wall, but they've been fully accelerated. Uh, so you can see here that a maximum, now I've played with the eyes, I've maximized it and I can view um, a complete 360 uh, lens correction on the video wall in real time. You might even get to see me at the desk there. Um, and then I can, I can restore that item again. I can do that with any of the videos at any time uh, for what it's worth. But yeah, I mean, that, that functionality right there is, uh, is, is usually extremely expensive. <laughs> yes. Now, I, I, think, I think it's worthwhile uh, Tony, to, to, to suggest that I'm unaware of any other professional video war solution that can actually do that. Now, don't get me wrong, you know, you, you could probably make something from cops pieces, but there is no enterprise professional video war solution that's able to do that. So yeah, that, that is, that's a good feather in the cap to have. Um, so definitely worth iterating. Push screen client. Um, so to play a video here, it says exactly what it, well, it does exactly what it says on the tin. We can right click any of the um, regions or we can go into direct control mode on the video wall and push the client screen that I'm sitting on to the video wall. Now, that's particularly useful for if you like viewing archived content on the video wall you can do it in real time um, or you can push your screen it's it's up to it's up to the user how he wants to do it i think in terms of responsiveness it's actually nicer to do it through push screen tony because he what he's doing is reflected on the video wall but you can also drag your drag the time bar and, and have the video reflected on the on the video wall uh, uh, that way as well if that makes sense um other other use use cases for the for the push screen um, like i said you can push conference calls on there throw office documents onto the onto the video wall anything that's on your display on your client pc you could just go ahead and throw it up onto the video wall okay. so web pages um as i mentioned before we you we accelerate uh, web pages with the um, Chromium engine and yeah drag and drop as you'd expect I'm just doing single items here the web pages can be in a layout file again they can be triggered you can have news feeds in a region um, uh, the video can stretch across the entire video wall no restrictions again on, on what you can do um, maps. I think I'm going to. I think I maximise the maps here across the entire wall. Again, no no functionality has been um, left unturned that you would expect to see in the NX client. So the web pages uh, feature really allows you to do like soft integrations as well to like third party uh, devices and systems that you're using right on the video wall. So you're able to combine yes. a lot of different sources of information, not just video from uh, NX, but also from 
uh, information from uh, those third-party systems that are browser-based, even the ViewSpan client like you're bringing up right now, the AWP interface, right? Yes. So it gives you just the ability to control, command and control environment to really pull all your information sources together and, and kind of group them into the screen that you want. Um, so it's pretty cool. Hey, there was a question that came in from Johan. Um, and it's a long question. But okay. uh, basically, the question is, can I add sequential views to a screen? And, and then he said, I mean, the screen is black. The first alarm comes and it adds a camera to the top left corner of a three by three view. A second alarm comes in and it's added to the same corner. The first alarm is moved to the right. The next alarm is generated uh, and the top left moves again. So basically as the alarms are coming in, it's shifting the, uh, the views yeah. based off of like the actions that are occurring. I mean, that's, that's really a question back at you, Tony. I mean, how I, could, could we do it with layout files? Could we, because you know, it, the, 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 the rules, engines, and triggers are no different. Yeah, I mean, Johan, I mean, the, the reality, that, like we don't, we don't reposition stuff based off of alarms, but what you can do is define, uh, you can use the layout as an action um, uh, rule so that you can open specific layouts or specific videos um, on, on, uh, on uh, the screens. Um, but I'm, but in terms of actually repositioning them, I do, I do not believe that is something that's supported right now. Um, I'm sure it could be implemented depending on the size of the project and, and, and you know, the business case for it. Um, but right now, uh, the base functionality would allow you to kind of move them uh, as it, as it, as the alarms come in, it would just be uh, pegged to like a single monitor that you have set up for that rule. So. so, I mean, that, that, that's one side to it. I mean, the flip side there, Johan and Tony, is that, you know, there is an SDK. There are lower levels. There's SDKs at a HTTP level, a TCP level, a C-sharp level, and a C++ level. So, depending on how much you want to, to roll up your, your sleeves and, and dive in, you can control the video war outside of NX, but you'd need to bring those NX events into play as well. So, you know, th there's a full stack of, of, of ways to do it. So there, it is possible, but I guess it's the amount of pain that you want to go through to get to where you want to be. Yeah, our developers, like we get qu asked questions all the time, can we do this? And the answer is always, yeah, you could, <laughs> right? But it, it's, a, it's just a business case, right? It's a matter of, uh, you know, to put it bluntly, it's a matter of how much money is attached to that requirement. Um, anything is possible given the, the right business environment, right? Um, but like, like uh, Richard said, you can also um, use the existing development tools and develop that functionality yourself if you are a software, uh, if you do have some software development capabilities or you work with a software developer, um, you could really customize exactly how this stuff works um, per, on a client, on a per client basis. It's just a matter of doing the work, right? Um, so. Yeah, and I think I think as well, Tony, with my product management hat on, you know, I'm interested for people to ask me for you know our advice. What options have we got? And we're you know we're freely available to give that because that's useful feedback for us. What people yeah. are wanting to do, especially when it's kind of specific to video walls. Um, so yeah, I mean, don't, you know, don't feel afraid to shoot over any questions to it. Um, background and grid. Uh, show the video here. What do I mean by background and grid? So within NX, you get uh, a, kind of, a kind of a snap to view. I'm not sure how many people know that you can set the actual grid reference in, in, in either the NX client or on the video wall, which doesn't resize the video, video when you drag it onto the display. So here, I'm dragging the video on, and instead of it snapping to a full screen, it's actually snapping to the predefined grid size. Yeah, that's called the minimum layout grid, right? And it was a feature I think that was introduced in 3.2 or 4.0, I can't remember which one. But basically, like Richard said, it allows you to predefine your layouts, right? So like with traditional VMSs um, that are out there, a lot of time you get like a fixed layout, right? With a certain way that the cameras are gonna be able to be displayed. Um, while NX, uh, our typical desktop environment is more like you drag a camera in, it takes up the full screen, you drag another camera in, it automatically resizes to allow you to kind of create your view. Um, you can go ahead and, and predefine what your grid looks like on a layout 
And mm -hmm. like Richard just showed, when you drag a camera in, rather than taking up the full screen, it's just going to peg itself to one of those grid points, right? Yeah. So that's, that's, what, that's what that's called, minimum, minimum layout grid. And you could do that, obviously, on, on the second tab, you've got general and background. You can insert a background image, put a grid overlay on there. So in this example, there's a schematic there on the video wall. And then I think the grid size I got was quite small there. So bear with me on that. But the concept's the same. Look, so you've got a grid and you can drag multiple videos over that schematic. Um, which may make more sense in a real, real life use case. I guess it's with the with 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 this view, it's better obviously for saving layout files or creating layout files, especially if you've got a combination of video and and, and web pages. Well, uh, one one thing uh, to clarify, for Richard, I think for everybody is um, these video wall controllers that you guys have built. Um, they don't use um, really advanced GPUs or anything, right? They're using the the CPU and the, the quick sync uh, decoding capabilities of Intel based CPUs. Is that right? But there are a number of chip technologies in the in the appliances. Uh -huh. Okay, so um, and and they are they're sort of they're in, they're embedded chipsets on a carrier board. So it's not exactly COTS. Okay. It's certainly you know Quadro Nvidia range of, of twenty four seven hardware. You know which is optimized for for, for for these use cases. You know not not the sort of GTX gaming cards. There's no PCI Express card. But they are chips that expose acceleration through the, the operating platforms for us to then hook into, yes. And the reason I bring that up is those, those uh, a lot of the video wall solutions that you see out there, they're powered by like uh, the Matrox video cards or like some other expensive GPUs. Mm -hmm. really increases the price of these things. So from a value perspective, um, the, the view span controllers should be a really competitively priced as well, mm -hmm. right? Yes, most definitely in that sense. Yes, it's you know it's still classed as an enterprise professional appliance, you know, built for twenty four seven ruggedized, and everything that goes with an enterprise solution that you would expect. It's not going to overheat, etc. But you know it is not in the price range of the high end, very very bespoke video wall controllers. That I'm not going to mention any names of Tony. Um, and and yeah. at a, a fraction of the price, but you know what? The interesting thing is with the with the de warping and lens correction of video, the functionality is actually far superior to because what you're doing is sitting on the shoulders of you know Nvidia's and Intel QuickSyncs and, and and harmonizing their hardware in such a way that you're making it dance. It, it, so it, it that's the clever part inside the the metal, if you like. Yes. And then uh, another question, uh, Richard, for you is, um, if they buy the um, ViewSpan video wall controller, um, do they, they still need to plan for video wall licenses? That's a really good question. And that's a question that I think we've spoke about before. It depends what functionality you want. It's a brilliant question, okay? Do you need video wall licenses? And we've talked about this before, Tony. No, you don't. If you want the, if you want the, the, advanced features then yes you do as one video wall license covers two regions in the use case that we're showing now to a region is a screen so you for one video wall license you're covering two screens you could use a region could be all six screens so for what we're doing now but as soon as you drag a video one well, obviously it's going to snap to all six screens isn't it if that makes sense you could do for half a video wall license but you can also do this for no video wall licenses and them appear as red crosses, but you don't get the functionality such as push screen, zoom windows, direct control. All you get is to be the ability to drag a layout onto a, onto, onto a region, um, but you can't then go into that region and do some more of these advanced features. And you can't like save a matrix um, yeah, exactly. Yes. Right. So, like, yeah, if you want the full functionality, you need uh, at least one video wall license, and that'll give you two regions to play with all that functionality on. Yeah, right? across the yeah across the, across the whole wall canvas. So if I've got if I've got six screens, I want to make sure that I can use each screen to its maximum capability. Then I would need three video wall licenses. That's correct. Yes. Yeah, so one one video wall license for each 
uh, for every two screens, right? Correct. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And that's 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 NX licenses. So there's no licensing with any of the software that comes with the ViewSpan hardware. All the software is in there, bundled, available. The SDK is all the interfaces, the plugin. That's all with fixed within the the, the appliance itself. The the video wall licenses is an NX part, which give you the NX ad, ad, advanced features. Are you uh, are you able to share like MSRP pricing uh, for one of these? Uh, the, what I, we'll go on to that slide at the end. I'm going to point everybody at sales at Veracity for that one. Um, so it's not yeah, just, really my remit, but that's yeah, no worries. Um, uh, the, the reason I asked, I just wanted to, to give these guys a comparison, for example, like I know a lot of, a lot of competitive solutions, they start off with like base video oil licensing at like $10,000 or plus. Right. Exactly. And, exactly. Yes. And, our, right. and the, the video wall license for NX uh, starts off at like, uh, MSRP 500 bucks for two monitors. Right. So the difference is, you know, with a competitive solution, you may look at an entry level price of 10 to $15,000 just for the software to get going, not including the hardware for the video wall controller. Um, whereas if you wanted to create a, a, a six screen video wall from us, you're looking at 1500 bucks for the software plus the hardware, right? So you're going to probably come in even below the cost. Uh, I'm guessing you're going to come in far below the cost of even just the software license for some competitive solutions. Exactly. Uh, yes. Yeah, exactly. You know, the, the, you know, if you want to see where, um, video wall is being uh, used, um, by network optics. Um, if you, if you watch some of the SpaceX launch videos, you'll see us in their control room. So just to give you an idea of the type of organizations that actually use the video wall functionality and depend on it. Um, you know, you're, you're talking about some of the biggest guys in the world um, that actually do use this. So it is proven technology and it's not something that's, you know, um, if you haven't used it before, um, feel free to ask for a demo license, for example, and we'll give you one. Um, so you guys can really see how it works. Um, go ahead, Richard. Yeah, and it, 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 what, this whole, what the ViewSpan hardware does is just simplify the whole experience for the integrator. You know, it's a piece of hardware, it's so easy to set up, you know, to turn a phrase, uh, super simple, Tony. And, uh, and, you know, together, bundled together, they are, they, it is quite a remarkable uh, combination. And, you know, I think, I think a lot of that's down to, the, obviously, the, the software engineers at NX and the thought that they've given into that, you know, advanced functionality that the video wall gives you, which is all within NX. NX. All I do is play fiddle to the, the message bus in the hardware and really make it sing. So most installs, you know, in, in the sort of silos that we talked about at the beginning, you know, the command, the sort of transport hubs, um, you know, leisure facilities, shopping centers, they just want six screen video wall. It's just one box, one piece of network, easy setup. And, you know, being able to, to, to display the video across all the screen boundaries really makes them a very happy end customer because they never expected that. I think, you know, um, to get just, I think I've nearly finished my videos, Tony. So I've, I've just done the tour region. Uh, that's really just a bit of showboating, I think, with what you can do across the video wall in terms of you can sit it, you, with all those videos you can see at the start, you can set the tour. Um, and it would just go through all the videos full screen um, on the wall. If we uh, go to the next slide, secondary streams. We're going to talk about this. No piece of hardware is a magic box. Every piece of hardware has bandwidth limitations. This is why we have a ViewSpan 6 and a ViewSpan 6 Plus. It all boils down to decode density. Now I'd like to give everybody a bit of a, an example of how resource intensive uh, video decoding can be. So if we took one of the latest eight megapixel cameras, this is roughly equivalent to decoding 24 D1 camera streams. Um, and uh, obviously you've got to take into consideration a bit of scaling on there, but usually the, the, the camera's secondary stream can be used in place so if we've got if you if the user wants let's say a four by four videos on a screen and they're all eight six you know five six megapixel cameras and he's scaling these cameras 
right down to 644 8 to D1 sort of resolution, it's such a waste of hardware bandwidth, decoding the full stream and then having to scale it down. It just seems a pointless exercise, especially when these video walls, a lot of the time, are just sitting there displaying the video. Because one of the advantages that we're finding that the video wall brings in, into a lot of installs is they're not, end users aren't always interested in analytics. They just simply want to watch the security guard move through the complex. And the easiest way for them to do that in the control room is sit and watch them on the video wall going through all the cameras. So in these use cases, which, you know, again, a 50-50 use case, they want to see, you know, 16 or nine videos per screen. And there is, it just seems pointless then having high resolution videos scaled down to small size. I think if, if you want to drag that video across the boundaries of each of the screens and, and watch a six mega, uh, uh, megapixel camera in its full fidelity as it should be, that's another advantage of this, this box because you can see all the pixels, whereas usually a client screen is just 1080p, isn't it? But here we've got, you know, a set of, of six screens where you can see the full fidelity of it. But if you're not going to be using it in that use case, use the secondary stream functionality found within the NX software. Now, I think I've got, I've got a video here that I could perhaps talk through because it's, it's, it's something particularly useful. And, and, and how we pick up these secondary streams was the, um, the slide at the beginning, which I'll, I'll touch on at the end. So if you select on an individual camera, and go to advance you have the secondary stream which 90 percent of the time is set up to be for ai which i think is about seven frames per second tony at a lower resolution you can change that again not always most of the time in cameras that support it or sources or endpoints that support it and turn the resolution down now then it's trade-off between what frame rate you want because obviously they are relative in terms of more bandwidth usage but it's great that you have the functionality in, in, uh, in, in the NX to tap into these secondary streams so I can record at full fidelity or I can view across all six screens at full fidelity. But I also have the option of streaming just a D1 sort of size resolution when I want a, a four by four 16 videos per screen on the video wall. Um, as long as integrators and stores and i'm sure they do understand that it, like i say it's not a magic box there, there has to be some common sense with it um you know it's set up for for you know a, a view spam six and a view spam six pro for people that want high density decoding but if you throw you know 16 times six six megapixel cameras at it it's going to struggle yeah you know, i mean I think, it's, not it's not magic Right. No. And there's a, there's a reason we do adaptive scaling. We have the secondary stream. And like Richard's saying, if you've got a situation where you've got a monitor that's a 1080p monitor or even a 4K monitor and you're throwing a bunch of cameras on it, there's no sense in decoding the full resolution video because what you're really doing is you're decoding pixels that will never be used on the screen. Right. So you're just wasting uh, your way. You're wasting CPU, basically. Um, because those, those pixels are not going to be fully decoded if you've got 16 cameras on a 4K screen um, and each one of them is 1080p. Well, a 4K screen is only four, four, four 1080p uh, cameras, right? Yeah. So if you're, if you're throwing up a lot of video on a single um, monitor, then you definitely want to use secondary streams because it's going to be more responsive. Um, yeah. It's going it's to be lower CPU, so your machine's not going to be uh, cranking really high and you're, you're not going to be, uh, you know, increasing the heat and the entropy and everything in the device so it's just it's just common sense in terms of like we don't want to display we don't want to decode pixels that aren't being used yeah, right exactly yeah thrown away anyway i mean it, 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 it an interesting point here which most people will find interesting fact if we take a seventh gen uh, i7 processor and do software decoding we're talking about 12 1080p 30 streams okay don't hold me the rough these are rough numbers okay roughly but give or take the odd stream. If we take the same 7th Gen i7 and we do it in hardware, we use the QuickSync, which we talked about before. Um, NVIDIA has got its own set of numbers, but the same i7, if you use the hardware, there, you get 24 1080p 30 streams. So 
This goes to show again the cost savings in terms of thermals, power usage, etc., that we were using on these video walls. Just, just something I just remembered there, Tony. But going back to this this secondary stream, as you can see, when, when we first connect the, the video wall to the NX server on the message boards, we've got three options: auto, yes, and no. So I think yes and no are quite self-explanatory you know never use secondary streams or yes always use secondary streams but the auto option which is the default says if the stream on the wire is higher than 1080p 30 i will automatically switch over to the secondary stream so if you like the numbers that we have for the matrix the performance of the controllers they're all based on 1080p 30 video streams which seems to be a sort of industry standard I think you agree. So if we go above there when it's set to auto, the software will automatically roll on to using secondary stream. Um, I think that's it for the video um, uh, section, um, Tony. So, all right. So just just to go through some points again briefly. Uh, it's the second to last slide. I shan't keep anybody for much longer. Um, it's a combination of harmonized software and hardware. It's scalable and dependable. They're not gaming GTX cards. You know, this isn't cots based hardware. Again, this is enterprise, a fraction of enterprise cost. Layouts, events, triggers, and rules all integrated within the NX environment. Um, it's a simple setup for integrators. We like to be thinking we're taking the headache out of the install with these features, um, especially from a network uh, perspective. And obviously we've talked about uh, increased decode density using GPU technologies, spanning uh, monitor boundaries. Um, we're here, like I said to you on a moment ago, you know, advise on specifications, help, help you support, support the product, um, you know, help with commissioning of products, you know, help with the integrated the tailored integration experiences that we talked of you know av capture input you know that's something else we can bring into the mix because i know that's not part of the nx client software but we can bring av capture so you want to capture another machine using a you know a capture device you know we can do all these things we're very familiar in the in the video world uh, video war world uh, of what people want to do so please don't be afraid to sort of reach out and and, and and contact us to discuss what it is that you require or need um it and i think a lot of it comes down to customer expectation i think if you talk to to, to, to us at rasty at the start of the project we can say look this is what you this is the hardware you need and this is what the customer needs to understand and that obviously then gives the, the customer confidence in, in the integrators for, for what it is that they expect at, at the end uh, of the install. Um, so that's so, important. So you guys will help with the design aspect. Yes. Yeah. I think, yeah, I, I, I yeah, I, I, you know, it'll be, it'll be obviously it won't, won't go to the sales at veracityglobal.com. It'll go to a, to a more product management uh, email address, which I which will get back to you. Um, I'm sure the sales team will think it's great me me, me inundating their their inbox with with all these uh, <laughs> questions now, but that's just because this next slide happens to be sales. Like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, so yeah, if you're interested in in learning more about the product, um, like Richard said, just email sales at veracity.global.com, and these guys will get back to you um, with more information. Um, I'm guessing uh, pricing and all that kind of good stuff. Yeah. And I say Veracity have got, you know, there's a global distribution channel on this, so there's, there's, there's no issues with, with, with that. Stocking the selected distributors, um, which are common in, 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 in all regions. Um, I think yeah. that's, that's, that's sales at veracityglobal.com. And it's Q&A time. If anybody's got anything that or an experience as like I said at the beginning I, you know I'm very interested in people's experiences and experiences that perhaps we've, we've not covered yeah any questions at all um, let us know we got six minutes left before the end of the hour so we could answer at least one or two questions I mean I, I mean I can I'm, I'm happy to sit here and talk about some of our experiences um, 
Where, uh, got... where have uh, the view span controllers been used? So we've seen them go into prison installs, hospitals, um, say supermarket complexes, uh, shopping centers. You know, it's that where, where you know, a, a fully integrated solution needs to be. And, and the integrator doesn't want the hassle of, 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 of a video wall. It seems to be the perfect fit. Um, we, we, you know, we <laughs> talking about some of our experiences in, in some of these sites. I mean, from, from a remote perspective, we, we've, we've found integrators have, struggling with the AV side of it at times as well. So, you know, power saving settings on monitors. I think it just reflects that video walls are probably more complicated or harder than, 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 than we first think when we talk about them. There is no user sat in front of it. There's no, there's no keyboard, there's no mouse. You know, you've got things like Windows Update, which we turn off. You've got things like, you know, being able to output the screens and turn the monitors off, in some cases at night when you go home. Um, you've got the power saving settings on the monitors. Now, there's all these different dimensions and problems and issues surrounding the video walls. And we're here to take that headache away. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, when I was an integrator, the, when customers asked me for a video wall, it was like the biggest pain. We was trying to figure out what they wanted to do, yeah. and like what we could actually do, and then what was the hardware that was involved, and then how would it connect to the, the VMS system and other systems they wanted to connect to. Yeah. Um, I, you know, command and control environment typically is a pretty complex uh, ask from a customer, um, but uh, you know, the VSPAN yeah. stuff should make it a lot easier for you guys to address those challenges. Exactly. And it is what the customer thinks he wants and what he really wants are two different things in the video war world. And as, as we've said, the, the expectation has to be, uh, you know, outlaid at the outset, really. It's, it, yeah. it, it's important. You know, you know, Tony, one thing we've I've just thought that we haven't really discussed much on it, it does fall under the bracket of experiences. And that's cabling. Cabling from the video war controller to the actual displays themselves. I know we touched on it uh, briefly, but you know we, we, we've seen the 20 meters cheapest HDMI cable that you can find, you know, powering the video wall. It's just not going to cut it, especially in a 24 seven environment. You, you really want good quality cables, stick with native display port from start to finish if possible, because you know, we've gone with display port on the output of the of, of, of the appliances because they're locking um, a native display port you know without having to go through a dongle to hdmi this is just a better comms link with the end device you know you start putting again substandard dongles in the mix because you know in all honesty a lot of a lot of the screens are being used the the, the integrators are using hdmi yeah if you're going to use a low cost dongle we're going to hit problems and headaches and issues so i mean present we're providing a dongle to try and avoid that but we stuck with display port and if you've got display port in the end device you know if it's a tv probably not but all professional monitors will have then display port is definitely the way forward i mean there's other technologies that sit in between as well tony so there's, there's what's there's, the uh, i mean just to follow up a question that what are the major differences between HDMI and DisplayPort from a technical perspective that make DisplayPort better? I mean, I think there's, there's, there's the communication channel on DisplayPort is a lot more comprehensive. There's a lot more to it. It supports a lot more modes and color spaces. Um, I think that the, from a physical aspect, the AV, the AV world loved the fact that it locks. You can get some HDMI yeah. cables that lock. I know people will say that, but they're, they're very rare. Yeah, but I mean, so basically when you plug the, the display board in, it's a locking connection. Yeah. Opposed and it's to the length. The get, the, yeah, and again, you know, it's the length. It's the cable run length. You'll get more out of display port than you will HDMI in terms what's of... The, what's the difference in length? Or how, how, how you know how long is a piece of string? Uh, um, it depends on it depends on the resolution and frame rate going on the wire. So if we, again, if we just talk 1080p, 60 frames a second, 10 meters HDMI, 20 meters DisplayPort. So it's basically double. 
in that case, yeah, I'm not yeah. done. I've, 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 my experience really only spans that use case, um, yeah. because obviously I don't, I, I'm not sure how linear it would be if you went up to 4K. But you know, there are other technologies out there that are quite affordable, Tony. You, you could start thinking about sort of Cat5, 6 extenders. Um, and again, don't use the don't use the cheaper ones. They'll just cause you more pain. Um, and the best solution, actually, the best solution of all is optical cables. They've come down dramatically in price. We were thinking about, you know, maybe we could think about providing them in the future as well. I, don't, I'm not, I doubt it, but you can get between four to about four to fifty pounds. You can get thirty, about thirty meter cable run for about what's about four, thirty forty dollars for thirty meters of optical cabling. And then, so, you know, in, in optical cabling, what you, you would uh, have like a converter from the display port to the optical and then on the other side, the same thing. Yeah, it's all built into the cable. So it's yeah. just like, just like, yeah, it's sort of the stub at the end. It would just be HDMI or display port. You can choose, you could choose which stub you want. I don't think you can, you can't mix and match them, unfortunately. You couldn't go display port from the view span yeah. appliance to HDMI in, the, in, the, in what's typically the televisions. But you have to go from HDMI to HDMI. But yes, that that conversion's done inside the dongle. And it's quite quite neat. It's quite small actually. It's, it's, it's not noticeable. But yeah, optical cables. That's that's the future for, for for video walls, most definitely. Cool. Yeah. Well, I haven't seen any questions come in. I guess you uh, gave a pretty comprehensive presentation. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, video walls, like I said, it's one of those things that's complex and it's really like. It's almost bespoke on a on a project by project basis, right? Yes. So, so guys out there, um, if you have projects that do require um, control wall or video wall uh, applications, again, I mean, sales at veracity. Uh, dot com, and uh, if you want to go back to the previous screen just so you can see the email, yeah, um, reach out to these guys and, and let them be your um, let them be your video wall resource. You know? Yes. Yeah. Uh, please do because I think this guys, it's the sales will just for for the emails onto me because it is it is great you know information to, for, for me from a product perspective. You know what are people doing? How we can improve the product? So there is value in that. So don't feel as if any questions are not worth worth asking. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. We are at an hour and one minute. Um, so I guess we're we're done for the day. Um, any any questions you guys have? I mean, this will be up on our works uh, my NX um, underneath the webinars. Uh, let me show you real fast. I do this at the end just to make sure everybody knows where to find these webinars. Uh, they'll be in our YouTube channel, of course, um, and then they'll also be on uh, works the next. Get rid of these things. So works the next, and just click on webinars here, and underneath the webinars, you'll see works the next webinars and NX solutions webinars. Uh, NX Solutions webinars are webinars that are held by our sales team in different regions, um, talking about different topics. Um, and then the works of the next webinars are the ones that I do here uh, at, a, at a headquarters with our partners like um, Veracity. So this is where you can find uh, the webinar here in the next uh, day or two. Um, and the presentation will be there uh, and contact information will be there as well for Veracity. So, all right, Richard, thank yep. you very much. Thank you for your ear. Thank you. Veracity is listed, listening in, says Chris Norton. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you very much for your time today. Um, and we appreciate it. And yeah. thanks again, Richard. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. All right. Speak to you guys later. Have, Have a good one. Bye.